For this lecture recording, we're going to discuss an organization's operational strategy, which complements our next video on creating a competitive advantage uh, in operations. So we're going to focus on strategy. Strategy is something that's created at a high level and then flows down throughout the operational team. An effective operations manager must know the company mission so that they know where to go when forming a strategy and flowing that through their team. It doesn't matter if a company is big or small, every company needs to have a strong strategy so that they can gain and retain market share. So first let's go over our mission and then we'll go into strategy. Mission is the reason for existence for an organization. It's, their, it's the present state, who we are, um, why we exist, what problems do we want to address. These are big picture things. It answers the question of, uh, of what, you know, what's our organization's purpose for being? What do we provide for society? The vision, which the book doesn't touch upon in this chapter, is where the organization is headed. So what's the future state? What problems do we want to solve for in the future? And what we intend to be a few years down the line. But the mission and the mission statement really address the purpose for the organization and are the reason for our existence. So that's who we are. The strategy is a plan that integrates an organization's major goals, policies, and action sequences into a cohesive whole. It tells us how we're going to get there, how we're going to go about executing the goals and making sure that the strategies, the tactics, the goals, everything that we've created, it's our action plan to achieve the mission. Strategies are created at a top level, but as we go through this lecture, you'll see that those strategies also have to flow down into the functional areas so that all areas within the organization, <clears throat> whether it's a strategic business unit or an operations team, are all aligned with the organizational strategy. So the strategy development process. First, we're going to analyze the environment, and we're going to do this by doing uh, a SWOT analysis. We'll go into SWOT analysis a little bit more on the next slide. But a SWOT analysis is really reviewing the customers, the industries, the competitors, trying to determine where we're strong, where, we, where we're weak, and what opportunities do we have. So analyzing the environment or the market. The next step is to determine the corporate mission. What's the firm's reason for existence and the purpose for the organization? Um, stating who we are and what we do. Now the textbook shows um, analyze the environment, and then determine the corporate mission. <clears throat> I don't think it has to be step one, then step two. I believe you can create your corporate mission and then analyze your environment, or you can do them both at the same time. So don't get hung up on step one, step two. Um, as you'll see in the next slide, I throw a little curveball in there because I show that the mission goes into the SWOT analysis as well. What's the real takeaway from all of this is after you've analyzed your environment, after you've determined your corporate mission, after you've done those things, then you can create a strategy, okay? Make the strategy align with your competitive advantages, which we'll go over on the next lecture recording, which is differentiation, cost leadership, uh, responsiveness, whatever it is that makes your organization really stand out with your core competencies, that's the strategy you're gonna wanna build and focus on and have operational um, uh, success um, to really achieve your organization's overall strategy. As an operations manager, it's your job to implement uh, ways to, to get creative, uh, create competitive advantage and increase productivity. Okay, so a SWOT analysis. The SWOT evaluation, it's, it's, um, it's a process, okay? SWOT analysis is an evaluation process. It's a structured planning method where you evaluate the four elements of a project or a business. A SWOT analysis can be carried out for a company, a product, a place, a person, and involves specifying the objective um, in the business uh, or project and identifying the internal and external factors that are either favorable or unfavorable to achieving our goals. So when you look at the SWOT analysis, you see that your strengths are characteristics of the business that give it an advantage over others. Okay, what are we really good at? What should we really focus on? Do we drive home a low cost leadership strategy? And if so, that's one of our strengths. Let's keep focusing on that. What are our internal weaknesses? These are characteristics that place the business at a disadvantage relative to others. So what don't we do well? Do we have you know, substandard quality that needs some improvement? Uh, do we have a, um, 
a, a production line that needs a little bit of help to become more efficient, whatever it may be, whatever those weaknesses are, then you can focus on improving those weaknesses. Opportunities are elements that the business could exploit to its advantage. So this could be a competitor that's having a rough time or a global pandemic or whatever it may be. There are external opportunities that are always available. And how can we exploit those opportunities to gain a competitive advantage? And then last is external threats. These are elements in the environment that could cause trouble for the business. So are we manufacturing something overseas and, and there is a, um, a natural disaster? Or is there going to be changes to tax policy or some kind of regulation that's going to hurt our business? These are external threats out in the environment uh, that, that need to be reviewed and addressed. And so when you take all of that together, you do your SWOT analysis, then you can, then you can create your strategy and do your strategic planning process. Uh, one time I was in an interview and someone asked me to do a SWOT analysis on myself. And I thought that was very clever and creative. And it made me think through, okay, what am I good at? What are my weaknesses? What are some of the things that I need to focus on going forward to uh, help minimize um, the, the uh, opportunities or the weaknesses that I have to where I can continue to progress in my career? So you can do a SWOT analysis on yourself uh, if you'd like. You can do SWOT analysis on a specific product. What does this product do well? Where is it weak? What are our opportunities? And then you can do SWOT analysis for an entire business too. So these are all things that a SWOT analysis can do. It's, it's a very useful uh, analysis if you actually get around to doing it. Okay, strategic planning. Most large corporations have three levels of strategy, okay? Large corporations. The corporate strategy defines the business in which the corporation will participate and develops plans for the acquisition and allocation of resources among those businesses. Businesses are often called strategic business units, units or SBUs. So an example of this would be, I, I currently work in the, in the lab industry, and one of the major vendors that I deal with is Roche. Roche is about, a, they do about $70 billion a year in revenue. They are, they are a colossal organization. But they've got strategic business units. <clears throat> they have one that focuses on pharmacy, so selling uh, pharma uh, pharmaceutical drugs. They've got an area for point of care. This is nurses who do work with people uh, on the bedside. They've got a diagnostics division, which is where I work. Um, they make chemistry analyzers and microbiology analyzers and anatomic pathology, um, tissue processors, things like that. So that's the diagnostics division. So within this large organization, they've got three different, they've got many different strategic business units. And each one of those strategic business units is going to have a different business strategy. You don't sell pharmaceutical drugs the same way you sell a chemistry analyzer in a lab. So even though all of those organizations all have the same mission, they're going to create um, strategic um, business strategies and functional strategies for their specific strategic business unit that align with the overall organizational strategy and mission. So, um, Let's just take a, a, an example for a functional strategy. Roche very much focuses on differentiation. And again, we'll, do, we'll talk about competitive advantages in the, in the next lecture recording, but differentiation, that's making products that are unique and high quality and different from their others, their competitors. Roche is not focused on being the lowest cost provider. They want to have high quality goods that people are willing to pay, that hospitals are willing to pay a premium for. They don't have a low cost strategy. So when you're on that operational team, your strategy is going to have to align with that to make sure that you are producing high quality goods that are unique and differentiated. And you aren't going to focus on buying lower quality uh, raw materials because you do not have a low cost strategy um, as an organization. So your functional strategy has to align with your overall corporate strategy. Okay. And so we talked a little bit about um, strategy up to this point. So when it comes to operational strategy, how an organization's processes are designed and organized to produce the types of goods and services to support those business strategies. You really want to leverage your core competencies, the things you do really, really well. What are you amazing at? Your core competencies. Those are the things you want to focus on um, so that you can create that competitive advantage. Core competencies are a set of skills, talents, and capabilities in which a firm is particularly strong. And when you focus on those core competencies and create a competitive advantage, you are more likely going to win that industry shakeout uh, when, when push comes to shove. So what I mean by an industry shakeout is as a business grows and they sell products and uh, competition will step up. There's, there's almost always competition. 
and only the strong organizations are going to survive. And typically those organizations have innovative products and services, but they always have strong operational teams too. Okay, they have strong operational teams too. Um, an example of this would be, uh, think through um, a, um, a pet store, right? Um, my, my wife and I, we, we love dogs. We've had a couple dogs recently. We don't have any at the moment because we've, we've got young children. Um, but I remember back in the day, you know, 10, 20 ish years ago that you could go to these specialty pet shops that were all around town and you could get unique, creative uh, toys and leashes. And uh, my wife liked to buy organic dog food uh, for, for our dogs. And those start, those stores just started going away. They're not really around anymore. They've been dominated by Petco. Well, Petco, they offer unique products as well. They've got organic dog food, but operationally, they are extremely successful. They've got a low cost, they've got unique products, and they are able to provide the same kinds of products and services that those unique toy store, uh, pet shops did. So that's why a lot of those pet shops are not around anymore, because when it came to the operational uh, shakeout, the industry shakeout, those companies could not compete with some of the larger ones. Petco does a great job operationally, and therefore they were able to win and retain business going forward. Okay, so that's it for operations strategy. Uh, we've uh, talked high level about a, how a firm creates a mission and a vision, does a SWOT analysis, and creates a strategy. And then we take that strategy from the high level, and we work it down to our operations team to where we can create a competitive advantage to make sure that we we retain and win business through the core competencies that we do well.